Good evening, class. Thank you for coming to this session at our annual ASMR retreat. This session is aptly titled, So You Want to ASMR. Today we will be talking a little bit about what ASMR um, is as defined by the larger community. And we'll also be discussing what you will need to um, assess in yourself to know if you have ASMR. Finally, we will talk about if it even really matters and, and what the implications of ASMR might be for um, the larger world community. Um, and then I'll give you a little bit more information about where else you can find information about this phenomenon. So let's go ahead and uh, please make sure that you have your number two pencil sharpened. Does everybody have one? Yes? Good. All right. So let's start by breaking down. for autonomous is for Sensory Meridian response. Okay. Can you all see that up there? somewhat um, involuntary and occurring on its, its own without um, prompting by the individual. Sensory obviously indicates the senses and um, meridian, um, I believe that's a reference to, you know, what, um, you know, biologically, you know, where this 
sensation um, you'd be originating from, but um, and response, obviously the reaction you're getting to a certain stimuli. Um, there is a website um, for ASMR research, and um, obviously the research efforts are somewhat in their infancy, but um, it is widely um, as, uh, widely in the community, it's of the opinion that much more scientific uh, research is necessary. Now, they define a, uh, the autonomous sensory meridian response as a physical sensation characterized by a pleasurable tingling that typically begins in the head and scalp and often moves down the spine and through the limbs. Now, this is um, an accurate definition for some of us, but uh, myself, for example, um, I continue to sort of call it an unnamed feeling, which is another popular term for it. Um, it's almost just like this sort of moment of paralysis, this um, you just are kind of transfixed by whatever that stimulus might be, whether it's a sound trigger or the sound of someone softly speaking or whispering. Um, or um, for some of you, that might not trigger it at all. It might be someone um, writing something out. It may be a particular type of massage a particular type of conversation you're having. So that's why it's so early in the research because there are so many different triggers for different people. However, there are, um, as you may or may not have seen on the various videos um, dedicated to create, you know, triggering your ASMR, um, there seem to be some very common themes with this, um, and that includes someone, you know, completing the task in front of you diligently, um, or uh, paying particular personal attention to you, to uh, you, such as a haircut, a doctor's appointment. Sometimes it's just someone rambling about an uh, intelligent thought that can do it. Um, it's part of the process. So. There's a lot of different things that can trigger ASMR, but um, the main factor that unifies us all is that we are experiencing this, and through the wonder of the internet, we've been able to find others um, experiencing this as well. Now, it is generally agreed that this is a sensation that often reduces stress. Um, it can also aid in sleep and falling asleep when um, being shown a, an ASMR stimulus just before bed, of course, or before a nap. Um, but the main uh, thing I would like to kind of talk about a little bit, which is a, a big point of controversy among the ASMR community is unintentional versus intentional triggers. For the vast majority of us, we all started with an un unintentional trigger, okay? And by that I mean you are out doing your normal everyday things at school, at work, at home, and all of a sudden this sensation you could not put a finger on just came over you, and you're not sure what it is. Um, all you know is that you kind of liked it, and that you think you're completely strange and weird and whatever. <laughs> but um, that was it, typically for most of us. And even I myself, up to earlier this year, had absolutely no idea that anyone other than myself experienced this sensation. So when I came across the um, 
community on YouTube and um, on Facebook, I was personally just astonished and um, I, I'm very happy that I did. Now, when, I, uh, when someone first watches a video that is an ASMR video, one of two things most likely happens. You either get that ASMR sensation off right away if you do have ASMR and you're blown away. Two, because you've been for so long thinking that it's some strange um, thing that uh, you're the only person in the world who has it, you might, um, it might take you a little while to warm up to someone purposely trying to relax or to trigger it in you. Um, so it might take quite a few different types of videos for you to try out, um, stimuli for you to try out, and it may be easier for you to look for random videos or to just continue to go about your daily business and taking note, being self-aware of when these moments uh, occur. Um, but the great thing is that, you know, everyone being different, it's still no um, less valid. If you're, you do not get triggered by what other people do, if you don't get triggered as often, um, it's also quite normal if your triggers change over time because of the, the um, effect of desensitization. If you're exposed to the same stimulus, my voice for example, over and over, over a uh, long, you know, frequent periods of time, then you may not get ASMR uh, for my particular voice for a while. Um, however, if you go away and check out other types of things, do other things, get your attention off it, um, then there's a good chance that that trigger will again, you know, bring out ASMR in you. And this brings me to the subject of the whisper phenomenon on YouTube. Um, most of us who are doing it really encourage new whispers because not only does it help us because we have, you know, often, not every whisper actually gets ASMR, believe it or not, but those of us that do, we're always looking for new um, triggers that really do it for us, especially when we're in the community being exposed to so many common triggers all the time. So really, you starting your own whisper channel um, has no cause for jealousy for me because if anything, you're going to not only help my ASMR, but you're going to give other people who do like my videos the opportunity to be exposed to different stimuli um, and to go and enjoy your videos and then they can come back to mine a little bit later and enjoy mine again um, after they've had a break. So that's why we, um, there is an initiative um, started by Whisperer Tasha Tasha 77 recently and we do strongly support all whispers who would like to give it a try and I may actually do another class soon about a few points that I feel are important if you do want to try whispering so I hope you will stay tuned for that class if uh, you are interested in becoming a whisperer but um, that initiative I don't know green will quite show up right here, but the initiative is so, which stands for support all whispers now again, the word um, whisperer can be misleading because I know that there's quite a lot of you, I don't know if you can see that too well, but I know there's
there's quite a lot of you that, including myself, that actually get triggered more often by soft spoken voices more than whispering. So once again, that is why the more people involved in the ASMR community, um, the more it benefits absolutely all of us. Which is why when there is a new whisperer or a whisperer who is getting um, treated poorly by some members of the YouTube community who leave um, negative comments on their channels um, when this person is only trying to do good things. Um, this is why our community is really trying to band together because again, we want different minds, creativity, imagination to only see how far we can take this thing. And um, eventually, I hope that there will be university departments dedicated to researching this, just um, like we research stress relief, because um, the more we are all examining this phenomenon together, the better it's going to get. So, um, missed that last letter. So, support all whispers is a brand new initiative. And I hope you will join us um, if you are already a part of the community and um, help us to do that and make sure that you are um, leaving nice comments and subscribing and um, sending nice messages to the, the new whispers you come across and also letting the rest of the community know um, that they exist. Um, I also like to address those of you who are not sure if you have ASMR but are very interested in it. Or you get sensations but you're not quite sure if they qualify as ASMR. My experience with the videos that I watch, I don't get ASMR from all of them. And that's okay. Um, some of them I just get really relaxed from. Some of them I learn something from because um, a common trigger is people doing things like taking apart a computer, uh, doing a walkthrough of a video game on screen. Uh, there's just, um, you know, talking about an antique camera, uh, cooking. I mean, it's just perfect because uh, you're always learning. You're always learning and um, if you don't get ASMR at all, I say you'll still benefit by being part of your, our um, community because you can help us know what, what relaxes you, what does reduce your stress. We would definitely like to know this. Um, you do not have to be getting this, you know, brain tingles, the tingles, the chills in order to benefit or feel relaxed um, from a video. So um, there's that and again, you can always learn. You're always um, learning new things, and um, so, um, you know, again, if you don't have it, we're more still very happy to have you as part of this group. Um, most of all, this group tends to be comprised of very positive individuals who want good things for other people and um, who are very creative. They come from all walks of life, all ages. Um, all different career paths, and um, some are in school, some are at the height of their careers, um, and I'm sure there's many um, high, high uh, level figures in the world that get this. Um, so, let's see what else we have left to talk about today. Um, The, um, on, on the note of things being relaxing, um, I strongly feel, and uh, again, a lot of others uh, do as well, feel that um, there are a lot of health benefits that go along with being exposed to the ASMR stimuli, okay? And, uh, And uh, these include stress uh, reduction.
introduction. They include um, Uh, they include um, being able to sleep easier, and um, so we believe that there may be a lot of mental and emotional uh, benefits to the autonomous sensory meridian response. And uh, finally, I think that's most of our, our lesson plan for today. Um, finally, I did want to give you a few resources. We are having, for those of you who do not already know, coming up on ASMR day. If you would like to know more, I highly suggest that you navigate to International ASMR Day. It is Facebook.com slash International ASMR Day and like the page. It's a like page so that you can get as much information as you can about this event. Um, I'm going to show that to you all so you can write that down. So I strongly encourage you to do so. And then this uh, flyer that I will be handing out to you today is um, a, a screenshot of the brand new website asmrradio.com and it's going to have its first broadcast on International ASMR Day, April 9th, 2012. Um, I strongly encourage you to go and register for free at the website and some of uh, your favorite whispers are going to be um, broadcasting um, and I myself am going to be a host over there um, and I'm very excited about that but we're also going to have a lot of um, other whispers involved in making the channel great and you whether you're a listener or a whisperer uh, will benefit greatly from being involved in that so uh, I want to thank you all for coming to the class and um, we may have further classes in the future, so please stay tuned and, uh, and um, we will let you know if those happen. I hope you enjoy the rest of your uh, stay here at the ASMR Retreat. Thank you and have a great day.